Even before they moved into Castle Douglas, Crockett was familiar with the town. The Cameronian Kirk on the Hill is halfway down Queen Street and the Crocketts drove or walked to seven miles from Lauriston every Sunday rather than attending the local Kirk at Balmagee. In May 1867, when Crockett was seven years old, the family moved from Little Duckery to Castle Douglas. They lived at 24 Cotton Street. This is now numbered 104 Cotton Street because the numbers changed as the streets grew. Crockett's home was virtually next door to the newly built St John's Catholic Church. The modern Castle Douglas, known locally as CD, had been established by Sir William Douglas less than a century before on a grid pattern inspired by Edinburgh and with several other grand ideas behind it. Originally, Sir William established a cotton spinning industry in the town, hence the name Cotton Street, but it was not a success. Although he describes CD as like a large village in his boyhood, it still must have been quite a change for the young Sam from the relatively quiet farm life of the Duckery. Maxwell's Guide to the Town describes a bustling place with a range of employment, builders, joiners, cabinet makers, skinnery, tannery, saddlery, drapers, grocery, watchmakers, tinsmiths, boot and clog makers, to name but a few. The post office was one of the most important in the south of Scotland. There were four banks, multiple hotels, a branch of the British Linen Company and many more businesses. At the top of Cotton Street was a lemonade, ginger beer, soda water and seltzer manufactory. This was worked by steam power, producing 800 bottles per hour, all mechanised with no hand corking. Next to it were an iron foundry and machine works. At the other end of the town was the gas works, established in the 1840s. This less salubrious part of CD, beyond Mile Street towards Carlingwalk Loch, was known locally as Little Dublin. It was where poor Irish families lived, as evidenced in the story Barraclough's, among others. At this end of CD, there was a bowling green and a quoiting green, and Carlingwalk Loch in winter was a venue for ice skating and curling. Both quoits and skating feature in Crockett's writing. It's worth noting at this point that Crockett refers to CD as Ken Edward in his fiction. Other significant places in the town which are written about in his work include Wallet's Mart, which was opened in 1856, featured in Sandy's Love Affair. In Crockett's day, it stood where the modern day swimming pool is. Sales were held on a Monday and were a great social event. A three storey clock tower known as the Cross in Crockett's day was erected by the boot and clog manufacturer. It has burned down a couple of times in its history. Crockett writes of it. In my own time, life centred about the cross, and so continued all my life as a schoolboy. But ever since, contrary to all the laws of gravitation, the town has been rushing faster and faster ever uphill, apparently to get a sniff of the cattle marts of a Monday, and to see the white smoke of the trains running and going about the junction for the rest of the week. The town hall in St Andrews Street was built in 1862, the large hall was used for balls, concerts and lectures, and it also has the Mechanics Institute with its reading room and library. Crockett was familiar with both of these as a boy, though he had to be circumspect about his reading matter. His biographer Malcolm Harper notes in Crockett and Grey Galloway, Crockett was always an omnivorous reader. He used to get books at the Mechanics Institute, he tells us, and was always careful to take two books at a time. One was a biography or a history, and that was to show at home. The other was a novel, and that was smuggled into the house under his waistcoat. We should remember then that C.D. was a thriving and growing town in Crockett's day. His famous quote, Little town, once built at the foot of a hill, and ever since running a race up it. I do not know whether you are very proud of me, but at any rate, I am proud of you. Thus has something of a figurative as well as a literal flavour to it. The railway came to CD the same year Crockett was born. By 1867, it was established as the central town in Stuartry of Kukubri and was a junction for three railway lines. Several of Crockett's relations worked at the station and he harboured early dreams of becoming a train driver. 
Indeed, he worked there one summer, probably either the summer of 1876 or 1877, and he wrote several stories about station workers. Castle Douglas Station had a platform length of 273 yards. A bus ran from it to the Douglas Arms Hotel, a place Crockett had a strong association with. The Douglas Arms, an historic coaching inn, features in several of his works, but most significantly as the site for the taking of the Galloway bursary in Kit Kennedy. The exam which changed Kit's life is clearly written in chapter 37 titled The Great Day and was taken in the Douglas Arms Muckle Committee Room. It is drawn with a strong autobiographical lens. Crockett himself sat the examination. As much as the Galloway bursary changed Kit Kennedy's life, so winning it meant that Crockett's own life chances changed. The bursary allowed him to go to Edinburgh University, something otherwise impossible given his family circumstances. However, the £20 was not enough to pay for living as well as fees, and the two ways he found to supplement his income, tutoring and journalism, became key to his transformation from Sam Crockett the Galloway Heard to Samuel Rutherford Crockett, the professional writer. Despite his earlier reservations of school and schoolmasters, he was fortunate that in CD he attended the Freekirk School on Cotton Street. It was in the building now converted to the numbers 43 to 47 and known as Cowper's School because of the charismatic head teacher John Cowper. When Cowper was poached to become headmaster of the new school set up by the Kelton School Board in 1874, Crockett went with him, first as pupil, then as pupil teacher, presumably during 1876 when he was preparing for the Galloway bursary. He remained friends with John Cowper and his family, sticking up for his old teacher in later years, but clearly did not intend to follow in his footsteps. Harper's Grey Galloway gives details of Crockett's time at Cowper's, and Crockett fictionalised it in Rogue's Island, with Cowper loosely disguised as Causland. Crockett's closest boyhood friendships were with Andrew Penman, whose father owned one of the two coach-building businesses in the town, and William McGeorge, who became a famous artist and who lodged with Crockett during their student days in Edinburgh. Penman described the young Crockett thus. Although he looked soft, he had a marvellous long reach and a style of fighting like an infuriated windmill, which was most disconcerting. Penman and McGeorge are fictionalised in both the Raiders and in Rogue's Island. For me, the latter novel, while barely known, is an interesting work. It is a semi-autobiographical rites of passage novel, fictionalising Crockett's last summer in Galloway. It also demonstrates how he took real boyhood experiences and reimagined them for the Raiders. Rogue's Island gives insights into the factual events, like the excitement of the circus coming to town. Lord Edward John's great and unique circus was on the common down by the loch, and from it came the most appalling roars and fierce sounds of wild animals. By the Isle Wood, an elephant was browsing peacefully, or at least cooling his feet among the marshy grasses. Once he blew a spray of water from his trunk over his back, and Penley and I felt that the world had nothing better to give, that is, for nothing. Crockett was an inveterate climber as a boy, even reckless. He didn't confine himself to the rooftops of CD, but as Penman describes, I had seen him go up the chimney of Threve Castle, right up to the top of the walls, walk round them and get down straggle-legged on the hanging stone, while we stood below and held our breath. Threve Castle provided a place for him to climb and dream, and Harper records the group fights that Crockett used to take part in there on Saturdays. He also adapted parts of local folklore into his medieval novels The Black Douglas and Maid Margaret. Another favoured boyhood location was Lover's Walk, which follows the shore of Carlingwalk Loch before cutting across the marshlands towards Gelston. Crockett still had relatives in the surrounding countryside and Harper reports that he spent weekends wandering far and wide in the countryside. Crockett's own 1904 non-fiction work Raiderland gives good descriptions both of the town of CD and surrounding areas. Reading Maxwell's Guide to the Stewardship of Kukubri in its third edition in 1878, reveals many similarities between the CD that Crockett knew in fact and that he describes in his fiction. This reminds us how much overlap there is between fact and fiction in Crockett's writing. While he was a romancer with a small r, 
Crockett's work also evidences much realism of the times he lived in. Inevitably, his works of historic fiction are drawn from the perspective of the 19th century, but many of his stories and novels of Galloway have what would be in his day contemporary settings. As such, they offer us an insight into a world now long gone, but which was vibrant, fresh and real to the young Crockett, and was still lived experience for many in Galloway when the stories were published at the end of the 19th century. During Crockett's lifetime, urbanisation increased, and I find the novel Clegg Kelly particularly interesting in this regard. While it was deemed Crockett's David's Copperfield in its day, for me, its crossover from urban to rural suggests more a kind of reverse great expectations. While Pip moves from country to town, Clegg does the opposite. Each young boy reinvents himself as he readjusts to his new environment. So as much as Dickens draws on England of the early 19th century, so Crockett draws a picture of Scotland in the mid to late 19th century with every bit as much realism and vigour. Then why is Crockett not as well known as Dickens? Hmm, that's a massive question to be tackled in another video. Crockett's youth in CD ended with a railway trip to Edinburgh in the autumn of 1876, a 16-year-old setting out for a whole new lifetime of adventures. But he never stopped writing about the adventures he had as a boy in Galloway, including his years in CD.